Mr. Warren Buffett is worth over $100 billion today. And though it hurts me to say it, he didn't get there by investing in index funds. He's made some incredible individual stock purchases in his seven decades of investing. Companies like Apple, American Express, and Coca-Cola. So how shocking was it when in this 2013 letter to Berkshire Hathaway investors, he noted that upon his death, the trustees of his wife's inheritance were instructed to put 90% of her money into a very low fee stock index fund and 10% into short term government bonds. A simple two fund portfolio. Now the question is, what was Warren Buffett thinking? And more importantly, is this actually an effective strategy? But first, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, where we learn how to build our wealth patiently and slowly. Consider subscribing if you'd like to build wealth together. Let's go a little deeper into this sensational letter. In the section Mr. Buffett lays out the two fund portfolio, he starts out by saying how he and his business partner, Charlie Munger, made study of business prospects a priority in their lives. And he goes on to say to the rest of us mortals that if we were wise, we would conclude that we do not know enough about specific businesses to predict future earnings. It's a humbling message, but if a man worth $100 billion is sharing his wisdom, I'm willing to listen. However, the next part of the letter bears good news for commoners like me. He says that a typical investor like me doesn't need the stock picking skills like him. In aggregate, the American business has done wonderfully well over time and will continue to do so. In the 20th century, the Dow Jones Industrial Index started out at $66 and ended at $1,497. Warren Buffett believes the 21st century will witness further substantial gains. Therefore, this is the important part. He goes on to say, the goal of the non-professional should not be to pick winners. Neither he nor his helpers can do that, but should rather be to own a cross-section of businesses that in aggregate are bound to do well. A low-cost S&P 500 index fund will achieve this goal. Warren Buffett then goes on to recommend the two fund portfolio, not just for average individuals investors like you and I, but also an instruction to his trustee. 10% of cash in short term government bonds and 90% in a very low cost S&P 500 index fund. And I love how he specifically recommends Vanguard. For the specific fund, this would translate to a Vanguard S&P 500 index fund, the VFIAX, and the Vanguard short term treasury index fund, the VSBSX. And he ends this section by saying he believes the trust long term results from this policy will be superior to those attained by most investors, whether pension funds, institutions, or individuals who employ high fee managers. Again, I want to emphasize the significance of the statement. Warren Buffett made his living by picking stocks, one that made him a billionaire today. Yet following his death, he recommends an index fund strategy and a simple two fund strategy at that. It almost feels like a man who made his living racing horses his whole life saying to his kids, hey, don't worry about horses, you should get an electric car instead. And Warren Buffett isn't the only one that touts this simple two fund strategy. Jill Collins, one of my favorite authors who wrote The Simple Path to Wealth, also recommends a simple two fund strategy. His recommendation is slightly different in the specific fund, but the general concept is pretty much the same. He recommends a total market index fund. A Vanguard specific fund would be Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, the VTSAX. And for bonds, he recommends Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Fund, VBTLX. And he breaks down his recommendation by phases in life. When you're in your wealth accumulation phase, when you're still investing into the market, he recommends 100% in stocks, VTSAX. He believes that you should be aggressive in your wealth accumulation phase, and I personally agree. You have time on your side, and because you're in the accumulation phase, the market ups and downs don't matter. And when you're now in the wealth preservation phase, when you're living off your investments, he allocates 75% of his funds to stocks, and the rest in bonds and cash. So the question is this, is a two fund portfolio a sound investment approach? Is it something that you and I could follow? And the simple answer is yes. Let me give you a few reasons why this simple index fund investing strategy is so effective. Number one reason, and Warren Buffett nailed this one on the head, is that we can't pick winning stocks. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger made a profession out of researching and identifying undervalued companies. And to their own words, they've made mistakes as well. People forget that Warren Buffett lost $3.5 billion on Dexter's shoes, and he admits that it was the worst deal he ever made. But through these mistakes, Warren Buffett honed his stock picking skills over a period of seven decades and thus made himself a household name. I think we should check our ego if we think we could pick stocks like Warren Buffett. The harsh truth is that I can pick winning individual stocks 
and neither can you, nor the vast majority of people who claim they did or can. It is amazingly difficult and having the humility to accept this will be the key to making you rich and wealthy. Index investing is powerful because despite our lack of stock picking skills, we can still amass quite a bit of wealth by harnessing the power of the equities market. Another reason why a simple two fund index fund strategy is so effective is that most people pay to deliver higher returns than the stock market, such as financial advisors and fund managers, as a whole can do it. When we talk about the stock market, we're most often referring to what is known as the Standard & Poor's 500, or simply the S&P 500. The S&P is an index of the 500 largest companies in the United States. It includes major companies like Apple, Google, and Coca-Cola, and it includes hundreds of other large to small companies. Since 1980, the S&P 500 has delivered an annual average of over 7%. So in order to beat the market, a financial advisor would need to design a portfolio that surpasses this number. This is not easy. The financial advisor must be skilled at designing the right investments, diversifying, and keeping up with market trends. A tall order for anyone. Very few financial advisors have the skill and knowledge necessary to beat an index fund. According to a 2020 SPIVA report, over a 15-year period, nearly 90% of actively managed investment funds failed to beat the market. The majority of these actively managed funds had either poor performance and high fees, or average performance and low fees, but only about one out of 10 perform well on both fronts. Another reason why index investing is so effective is its low operating cost. Actively managed funds are known to charge anywhere between one to 2% expense ratios. This means that between one to 2% of your investment is deducted each year to pay the fund manager to run the fund. On a $100,000 portfolio, that comes out to one to $2,000 annually. By contrast, Index funds are much cheaper given no person is actually managing the fund's performance. There isn't a person deciding which funds to buy or sell or when to buy or sell them. The fund simply replicates the index. As a result, most index funds have an expense ratio well under 0.1%. VTSAX and VFIAX Vanguard's Total Stock Market Index Funds and Vanguard's S&P 500 Index Funds have respective expense ratio of 0.04%. On a $100,000 portfolio, this comes out to $40 annually. I'll take a $40 expense ratio over $2,000 any day. And the real power of low operating costs really comes into play when you incorporate compounding into the formula. These expense ratios can net you or cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars over a period of 10 to 20 years. Costs matter, and the king of low costs are passively managed index funds. So you might be saying at this point, all right, Tay, I got it. Warren Buffett and Joe Collins' two fund index portfolio strategy makes sense. But how about compared to a three fund portfolio? Great question. The three fund portfolio is an investing approach made widely popular by the Bogleheads, devout followers of Mr. Jack Bogle's investment philosophy. And I talk extensively about the benefits here in this video. Simply, a three fund portfolio is a portfolio made up of an equities index fund, an international index fund, and a bond index fund. A popular Vanguard selection of these three funds are as follows. Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, VTSAX. You could also substitute an S&P 500 index fund, VFIAX. Next, Vanguard Total International Stock Market Index Fund, VTIAX. Then Vanguard Total Bond Index Fund, VBTLX. You could also substitute for Vanguard Short Term Treasury Index Fund, the VSBSX, based on Warren Buffett's recommendation. So when we compare this three fund portfolio to the two fund portfolios, the glaring difference is the absence of an international stock fund. So let's talk about this international fund. I also have a specific video where I go deeper into VTIAX, you can check out here. But in a nutshell, VTIAX, Vanguard's Total International Stock Index Fund, represents close to 8,000 non-US based companies. International companies that we may have heard of, such as Samsung, Shell, and Alibaba, and thousands of others we may have never heard of. By having this fund in your portfolio, you get exposure to emerging and developed markets holdings spread all around the world. Now, why would Warren Buffett and Gerald Collins exclude this fund from their recommended portfolio? There are a few reasons. One is due to accounting risk. Accounting is not a sexy topic, but you have to give it to America's accounting standards. Compared to many other countries in the world, especially emerging countries, America's accounting practices are top notch. When American companies produce their quarterly and annual financial reports, they need to adhere to strict accounting policies. Many other countries do not have the same level of transparency and strict accounting standards that's required here in the US. So what this means is that when we review a foreign company's latest annual financial report, 
there's a chance that the number reported is actually not that accurate. Another reason for excluding international funds is that the world economy is a lot more integrated today than ever before. Many of the major US-based companies today aren't just domestic companies, but they're actually international corporations. They generate a good percentage of their sales and profits overseas. For example, just look at Apple the biggest U.S. company based on market capitalization. As of the second quarter of fiscal year 2021, almost 70% of Apple's total revenue was generated from outside the United States. At one point, there were more Chinese people purchasing Apple products than there were Americans. So the perspective Warren Buffett and Gerald Collins could have is that when you hold U.S.-based company stocks, you already have access to the growth of the world market, and they're able to gain the benefit of that growth. And the final reason for excluding international funds could be due to its lackluster performance in the past decade. When we compare VTSAX versus VTIAX the past 10 years, from 2012 to the present, the 10-year returns on international funds is pretty dismal compared to the US market. 4.5% versus 11.8%. But this doesn't mean international funds always perform poorly. When we compare general domestic versus international index fund returns, the prior decade from 2000 to 2009, from this chart that I borrowed from Bogohead's Guide to Investing, we see that the international market outperformed the domestic market seven out of eight years, sometimes in margins of double digits. In this scenario, the three fund portfolio, which would have included international funds, would have done much better. So what does this mean when we compare two funds versus a three fund portfolio? The real key difference between these two funds is really the presence of the international funds. And the international funds did really well in the 2000s, whereas in the 2010s, it underperformed against the domestic market. And this is the part where I include the most common investment disclaimer known to mankind. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. What would the international market do in the next 10, 20, 30 years? But the more important question is, should you include them in your portfolio? I never like it when people tell me this, but it really depends. So much of it depends on your worldview and appetite for risk for the international market. If you believe that in today's global economy, U.S. companies are no longer exclusively U.S. companies and that they're international corporations, a two-fund portfolio might make sense for you. There's good evidence to reinforce this assumption. Just look back to the recession of 2008. It's most often referred to as the global financial crisis, not just a U.S. crisis. What happened with the U.S. housing market had a ripple effect across the whole globe because our markets and companies are now so tightly integrated. Growth in countries like China and South Korea is already being reflected in the U.S. companies like Apple, who are selling their latest iPhones overseas. And another reason why a two-fund portfolio might make sense for you is if you just want simplicity. Two is always easier to manage than three, and if you want that level of simplicity in your life, I believe the two-fund portfolio will be perfect for you. All right, so where do I personally stand? Somewhere in between. I love the simplicity of two-fund portfolio, but I also like the idea of having some limited international exposure. So the majority of my equities are held in VTSAX, and I have a small percentage in VTIAX. Really small percentage until I get more comfortable with international exposure. And I'm adding a little bit of VVTLX as I get closer to my retirement age. If you want to delve deeper into the three-fund portfolio, check out my video here. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, all the best.